The blessings of Ramadan. The blessings of Ramadan. The blessings of Ramadan. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidil Mursaleen. Amma ba'd fa'a'uzu billahi min ash-shaytan ir-rajim. Bismillahi ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalat wa salam alayka ya Rasulullah wa ala alika wa ashabika ya Habiballah. Assalat wa salam alayka ya Nabiyyullah wa ala alika wa ashabika ya Nurullah. Sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In this month of Ramadan, we all find it easy to do good deeds. The enthusiasm and the euphoria and the passion all brings us to do some good deeds. But the problem isn't in doing good deeds. The problem comes when trying to give up sins, to try and reform yourself, to try and come closer to Allah Azza wa Jalla and His Habib Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Sallam. Imam Ghazali Rahmatullahi says that there are two major parts to deen. The first is staying away from sins, and the second is doing good deeds. And what he writes is very interesting. He says it is easier to do good deeds. So we see in the month of Ramadan or in the night of Shabi Barat that a lot of people, they cry in the court of Allah, Azawajal, they ask for forgiveness, but then they return to their ways. A lot of people in this month of Ramadan and Mubarak will be trying to do good, trying to go to the Masajid, trying to pray Tarawi, but then they will continue their habits of backbiting and lying and cheating and deceiving and they'll continue to look at the wrong things on the internet, they'll continue to watch movies, etc. And so they're doing good deeds, which was the easy part. But where they have failed is giving up the sins. And this is where the real test lies. We need to actively try and cut out our sins. Because it is the disobedience of Allah Azza wa Jal which takes us away from the mercy of Allah Azza wa Jal. The famous uh, saying of Hazrat Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala the great, he says, achieve piety through obeying the commands of Allah Azza wa Jal. And through obeying the commands of Allah Azza wa Jal, achieve piety. So one of the purposes of Ramzan al-Mubarak is that you achieve piety. The glorious Quran tells us that. So how do we achieve that piety? We achieve it by obeying the commands of Allah Azza wa And those are not just the commands where we're told to do things. Those include the commands where we're told not to do certain things. Now a lot of us seem to think that we'll take Ramzan and Mubarak in our stride and we'll carry on as normal and we'll do a few good deeds and it gives a little bit of peace and tranquility to the heart. But we'll carry on with all our sins as well. Because it's difficult to give those up. Because I'm used to those, they're habitual, I've, they, I've become addicted to those. It's a habit and I can't get rid of those. This is where the test lies. Let me give you an example. Some people have this habit that they've got to go onto social media and got to go onto the internet and they've got to look at the wrong thing. And even as much as they pretend, they've got to have their daily dose of the wrong. And even in Ramzan and Mubarak, because they're so addicted to it outside Ramadan that they struggle to do it maybe a day goes by they don't do it and they think yes but after a day or two the shaitan and their nafs really push them and they start to look at the wrong things now it's giving that up and what they say is well I'm doing some good deeds I'm reading my salah and I'm doing this so what's the, what's wrong with looking at non-mehram halanka this is completely wrong and against the commandments of the Quran and the hadith of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa but the problem is that the shaitan instills in our heart this, oh, so what? doesn't matter, but it does matter. Because when you're obeying the commands of Allah Azza wa Jal, you are becoming closer to Allah Azza wa Jal. You get that feeling of piety, that sincerity in the court of Allah Azza wa Jal. When you stand in your salah, in Ramzan al-Mubarak, where you've spent your day in the zikr of Allah, you've read the Quran, you've stayed away from sins. Then you develop this taqwa, this piety. 
and you feel close to Allah Azza wa Jal. When you go into Ruku, you're really going into Ruku and you feel that I'm prostrate, I'm bowing before my Lord. When you go into Sajda, you feel that lazat, that that and you know that brilliance of the uh, prostration in the court of Allah Azza wa Jal. And yet, then you go and commit a sin, and suddenly all of that disappears. And in real terms, you had reached the heights of enlightenment in Ramzan al Mubarak by pleasing Allah Azzawajal, by doing the good deeds. But by not staying away from sins, you then waste that spirituality. And this is where it is important that as well as doing the good deeds in Ramzan al Mubarak, we give up our bad habits. If we have a habit of you know, disobedience to our parents, we need to change that. If we have a habit of shouting and screaming at anybody, we should give that up. If we have a habit of taking drugs, so this is the month to change. If we have a habit of looking at the wrong thing on the internet, then this is the month to change. This is where the scholars write in accordance with the Hadith of Mubarakah, that Allah Azza wa Jal wants you to migrate in His way. Now, migration is where you go from one country to the other. The great companions of Nabi Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi wa Wasallam migrated in the way of Islam. They left the Makkah al Mukarramah and they went to Abyssinia and different places. Akka Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam migrated from Makkah al Mukarramah because it was difficult there to Medina al Manavra. But this migration, the scholars say, is different. What they say is that Allah Azza wa Jal wants you to migrate. Migrate from the land of sins to the land of his obedience. SubhanAllah. Allah Azza wa Jal wants you to uproot everything, your house, from the land of sins to the land of the pleasure of Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah Azza wa Jal wants you to settle in this land so that your life evolves around the zikr of Allah Azza wa Jal, the obedience of Allah Azza wa Jal. And then Allah Azza wa Jal's mercy will truly descend. Now the problem we have is we try to combine two opposites. We try to combine good deeds with bad deeds. We try to read Salah and Taravi, but we carry on with jealousy and hatred in our hearts. And so we don't feel the peace and tranquility. We try to do the zikr of Allah with our tongue, but then with the same tongue, we do backbiting and tail telling. And this is where things go wrong. When we give in the way of Allah, our ego gets the better of us and we start to advertise it. And all of these things, the great scholars say, detract from our achievement, which is piousness, fear of Allah. So the way to achieve this is to identify the sins that you are committing. Accept those, repent in the court of Allah but also have a plan in this Ramazan that I'm going to come out of the Ramazan free of this sin. I'm never going to backbite again. I'm going to protect my tongue. I'm never going to look at the wrong thing again, whether it's on the internet, Facebook, Twitter, anything else. I'm going to protect my eyes. I'm going to protect my ears. I'm going to protect my tongue. I'm going to protect my hands. I'm going to protect my feet. And Imam Ghazali Rahmatullah says that in this way, O person, if you can protect your seven organs from sin, then you are on the road to the obedience of Allah Azza wa Jal. Make sure you don't do anything wrong with your eyes in this Ramazan. Make sure you don't do anything wrong with your ears in this Ramazan. Make sure your tongue doesn't upset anybody in this Ramazan. Make sure that no haram goes into your stomach in this Ramazan. Make sure that you protect your private parts in this Ramazan. Make sure that your hands don't oppress anybody in this Ramazan. And make sure your feet don't take you towards anything wrong in this Ramazan. And in this way, Imam Ghazali Rahmatullah says that you are on the road to Jannah. Last hadith in Mubarakah. Narrated by Hazrat Abu Huraira of the Allah Ta'ala that of the seven people under the shadow of the shade of the Arsh of Allah Azza wa Jal on the Day of Judgment is the one who remembered Allah Azza wa Jal in loneliness started to cry in the awe and the fear of Allah Azza wa Jal in these nights of Ramadan and Mubarak. If we can get up for tahajjud before Sahri and we can remember our sins we truly repent in the court of Allah Azza wa Jal, then we will truly have reached the essence of Ramadan, which is here to put us in touch with Allah Azza wa Jal, and to be more conscious of our Creator and to please our Creator and to be obedient to Allah and His Habib Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam.
आमीन विजया हिंद बिलमीन सल्लाम मदनी चैनल